Welcome to Module 19 of Engineering Vibrations 1, an introduction to single degree of freedom systems. Today's learning outcome is to derive the differential equation again for a simple single degree of freedom system undergoing rotational motion. Uh, today I want to look at uh, another demo, and so here's a demo of another vibratory system. Here's another demo of an actual real-world system. Perhaps this is some sort of a prototype of, 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 of some system you can imagine. Uh, we have the, my yardstick and then I have a spring at the top and it can oscillate back and forth. If I had a tension compression spring, it would oscillate back and forth. So let's go ahead and develop a physical model for that actual system. And you can see that I've drawn my yardstick here. That's where all my mass is going to occur. And I have a spring at the top. This would be my hand, which I've uh, modeled as a, a support. So we then have to choose the generalized coordinate to describe the motion. You can think about what generalized coordinate you're going to choose. And uh, you should have said theta, like we did last time, a little different orientation. What should we do next? You can stop the video if you'd like. Think about what you're gonna do next. And after you've thought about that, you should say draw your free body diagram equals kinetic diagram. This is very much like what we did in my engineering systems uh, dynamics, uh, engineering systems in motions dynamics course, which was a prerequisite for this course again. And so here is my free body diagram equals kinetic diagram. Um, I'm going to, because we did it last time, I, I'm only gonna uh, show some of the changes. We still have our reaction forces at the bottom with the pin. Uh, we included the weight force. Um, the displacement of the spring, uh, this is theta, so the opposite side would be sine theta. L sine theta times K is how much the string, spring stretches. We're assuming that the spring is in the unstretched length in the static equilibrium position. Uh, on our kinetic diagram, we have our MA tangential and our MA normal. Uh, this time, however, it's not a point mass, and so we have an I alpha term or an I theta double dot term, the mass moment of inertia times the angular uh, acceleration. Why again did we include the, uh, the weight term? And so what you wanna do to figure that out is look at the static equilibrium position. And as you see here, in the static equilibrium position, none of the force in the spring is uh, holding the weight. So again, you can only emit that weight term when the spring force balances the weight in static equilibrium and throughout motion. And you can see that it doesn't balance it in static equilibrium this case, in this case. So there's my, uh, again, my free body diagram equals kinetic diagram. What do we do next? Uh, this should be getting to be old hat for you now. Uh, we're gonna sum uh, moments and come up with the equation of equilibrium. Uh, I'm gonna choose to sum my moments about point R on my free body diagram, set it to, to equal to the sum of the moments about R on my kinetic diagram. Uh, so I have K times L sine theta, which is the spring force times its moment arm. Uh, its moment arm is uh, this distance, which is capital L, L here times cosine theta. Uh, minus now we have mg, uh, its moment arm is L over two sine theta. And then uh, we have the mass times the acceleration uh, tangential times its moment arm. Uh, again, it's going to be negative because it's causing a counterclockwise rotation. So uh, the only positive uh, moment term is from the spring up here. The weight is negative and the MA tangential term is negative. Uh, we don't have uh, a uh, mass times acceleration normal term because its line of action goes through point R. But we have added now the, uh, the IG term, the IG theta double dot term, which is, again, I've, I've portrayed as uh, as clockwise to be consistent with my mass times acceleration. So that's minus IG theta double dot. And so once again, we're going to assume small angles. And so sine theta becomes theta. 
I want to take a little time here to discuss what we mean by small angle approximation. So let's look at theta and say that theta is uh, one degree. So very small angular oscillations back and forth. I'm going to change that into uh, radians. So I have two pi radians per 360 degrees. And so in radians, one degree is uh, 0 0.0174 radians to four significant digits. Now if I take the sine of theta, where theta is equal to one degree, so this is 0 0.01745, the answer to that is also to four significant figures 0 0.01745 radians. So you can see the four significant figures, that's a, a real good approximation. Now let's say we increase theta to five degrees. So now we have a theta equals five degrees, which is a little larger oscillation. I'll convert it to radians. And that comes out to be 0 0.08727. 0 0.08727. Now, if I take the sine of uh, 5 degrees, where if it is 5 degrees, that becomes 0 0.08716. So you can see. Um, at least out to two significant figures and almost out to three significant figures. Uh, again, even with a five degree oscillation back and forth, uh, we can, we can, that, that's a, not a bad approximation. So let's go to 15 degrees. So theta equals 15 degrees times two pi radians per 360 degrees. And that becomes 0 0.2618 radians. Um, and if I take the sine of theta, where theta equals 15 degrees, that becomes 0 0.2588. Radians, and so um, that's that's uh, good to two significant figures, uh, and and this is where at, at about fifteen degrees is where it, it starts diverging quite a little bit, and so we can't approximate sine theta as being theta for any oscillation greater than about fifteen degrees, depending on how much accuracy you want to have, <clears throat> and so. Um, uh, that just gives you a feeling. 15 degrees is, is quite a lot, though, and so we can linearize uh, sine theta to being theta. Uh, I would say, in most cases, up to about uh, 15 degrees, if, if that's what we're willing to accept as far as um, uh, error is concerned. And so uh, I, I hope that discussion clears up a little bit when you hear over and over again, hey, I'm going to use the small angle approximation. Uh, so sine theta again here is theta. Cosine of theta for small angles is uh, cosine of zero or one. And uh, acceleration tangential again we said was in this case L theta double dot, but our moment arm is uh, L over two theta double dot. So this should really be L over two theta double dot because we're looking at the center of the rod. And, oh, I'm sorry, IG, uh, the last term, is the mass moment of inertia for a the, the ruler, which I'll assume is a slender bar. Uh, for a slender bar, the mass moment of inertia about its mass center is 1 12th ml squared. Uh, you can look that up uh, uh, in a reference or online. Uh, it's fairly readily available. You could integrate it, but 
uh, with all the tables and things that are available now, uh, it's it's very easy to find the mass moment of inertia for a, uh, a a slender bar about its mass center. Okay, so there's our differential equation of motion again. Uh, if I go ahead and uh, and uh, take all of the assumptions that I've made, uh, I, it results in this. Or if I rearrange it, uh, this is the equation I end up with. And so you can see here, if you recall and uh, look at the analogous translational system, we have m effective, which is the coefficient in front of the acceleration term, k equivalent as the coefficient in front of the displacement term. Um, and so with that, we can find the natural frequency for this system, which ends up being kL squared minus mg times the quantity L over 2 divided by one-third ml squared. Okay, so it's the square root of all of that. And it's in radians per second, and that's our answer for this, uh, again, this uh, rotational single degree of freedom oscillator. Uh, I did put a work worksheet in this module for you to do on your own, and uh, I ask you to derive the differential equation of motion and, again, solve for the natural frequency. And you can, you can uh, treat the mass at the end as uh, a particle mass, and you can neglect the mass of the rigid bar to which the particle is attached. And I've put a solution uh, in, in the lesson. And so with that, a uh, summary of today of this module is uh, we, we again derived the differential equation of motion and looked at a simple single degree of freedom system undergoing uh, rotational vibration. And that concludes today's module.